I had someone request a video on this topic, so I figured this could be a short little debunking video. People continue to think that Leon Trotsky's permanent revolution advocates for military adventurism, as in, for invading other countries. I think this is a product of people getting Trotsky's role as leader of the Red Army mixed in with the incorrect narrative that the 1920s debates in the Soviet Union were between Stalin's socialism in one country and Trotsky's permanent revolution. I someday hope to do a series of videos on what the arguments actually were about in the 1920s, but for now I wanted to make a quick video debunking the idea that Trotsky advocated for growing the revolution by the Red Army, as I kind of need a break from the project I've been hammering away at for about two months now. In the 1930s, Trotsky was interviewed by Albert Goldman, an American civil rights lawyer as part of the Dewey Commission. Reading part of the interview where Goldman interviewed Trotsky, but assuming there is no dual power in a country, assuming that the proletariat does not attempt to take power, did you ever believe or advocate the idea that the Red Army should be sent in other countries? Trotsky responding, a revolution by the Red Army would be the worst adventurism. To try and impose revolution on other people by the Red Army would be adventurism. But a quote from 1937 is not enough. We should have more evidence than just Trotsky's word on his position in 37. So let's go take a look at a few historical examples. First, we're going to start with the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. In December of 1917, in a speech, Trotsky did say that a revolutionary war might be needed, but this was on the condition that the Kaiser refused peace, and even then, in his speech, he debated himself whether it would even be possible. If this dead silence were to reign in Europe much longer, if the silence were to give the Kaiser the chance to attack us and to dictate terms insulting to the revolutionary dignity of our country, then I do not know whether... With this disrupted economy and universal chaos entailed by the war and internal convulsions, whether we could go on fighting. Trotsky then stated that no, that they could build a powerful army of, and soldiers and Red Guards if they had to. The Bolsheviks had initially a hope that there might be peace without annexations, that regions might be given the right to self-determination. This can be seen in my first Brest-Litovsk video, so if you want a little bit more coverage on these events, please go watch that video. Um, I've not yet covered this, but eventually the Germans would offer no such terms. Uh, in January this time, Trotsky advanced the idea of termination of the war without signing any peace and demobilizing. He felt Germany would be too weak to actually attack them. Of course, this would end up being wrong, but this was the position that Trotsky took. He did not, however, advocate for revolutionary war. There was, though, a faction of people who did, which I'll cover this more in depth in a future uh, in my next video on Brest-Litovsk, whenever I get around to making that. Bukharin was the main leader of those who were opposed to the treaty and for revolutionary war, as well as the FSRs were in favor of revolutionary war. So we can see in the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, while Trotsky felt it might be an option, it was in reaction to the idea of the Kaiser refusing peace and continuing to invade, not spreading the revolution at the end of a bayonet. Next, let's take a look at Trotsky's position on the war with Poland. It is worth mentioning that the war between the Soviet Republic and Poland was sparked by border skirmishes that had broken out without orders from the Polish or Soviet governments that occurred due to Poland seizing parts of Belarus and Ukraine. Though, like many events, I want to dive further into this topic in a future video. In July of 1920, Trotsky stated his intention with all Ukrainian and Belarusian territory secured, he would order the Red Army to halt and not advance any further and make a public offer of peace. Lenin and the majority of the Politburo were for the continuation of the war into Poland. No one in this fight argued for the idea that communism and rev revolution be forced on an unwilling Polish population. Lenin and others knew that in 1917 there had been Soviets in Poland and fairly strong support for communism there. They believed them to still be there and still be strong. Even in early 1920, Trotsky spoke about the Polish Soviets. None of them were fully aware to what extent they had been suppressed in Poland in the years since. The Politburo asked Polish communists who had joined the Bolsheviks and lived in Russia their opinion. Karl Radek and Felix Dzerzhinsky opposed the invasion and said it would result in a surge in Polish patriotic sentiment. Another Polish communist, Lipinski, greatly exaggerated the strength of Polish communism. Trotsky would side with the opinions of the Polish communists who opposed it. Trotsky would submit to the decision of the majority and carry out his job despite opposing it. When the war did turn to disaster, Trotsky argued in favor of a peace deal which Lenin supported. And finally, for my historical examples, Georgia. Now, this one is a bit more complicated than the others. This is yet another topic I would love to dedicate several videos to, and I probably will, so you can look forward to that at some point in the future. But for now, we can cover enough to talk about Trotsky's opinion of it. In 1920, the Russian Soviet Republic concluded a treaty with Menshevik Georgia, recognizing its independence. 
However, in 1921, the Red Army invaded and seized the country. Trotsky, who was in the Urals at the time of the invasion, was enraged, and when he returned to Moscow, he demanded the creation of a commission to investigate the events and to bring to book the presumed adventurer. He would go on to lose the vote, however. Trotsky then, in 1922, wrote Between Red and White, and in it, defended the invasion to some extent. Though, he was ordered to write the book by the Politburo, which might explain its differences with his earlier actions on the matter. Later, in his biography of Stalin, which he never finished, Trotsky would return to being critical of the invasion, as he had been at the time. To conclude, Trotsky in many situations during the Civil War opposed invasions, even in the case of Poland, where the Bolsheviks thought there would be support amongst the workers for it. Now, I don't want to go into Trotsky's and the left opposition's uh, opinions in the 1920s, as that's a topic for a future video, but during those debates, Trotsky was not calling for invading other countries or to export the revolution via the Red Army. And all, it was kind of fun doing a video by request. Uh, feel free to ask me in the comments or on Twitter if you want a topic or a certain point debunked. My channel's overall goal is not to just debunk individual points, but to provide a more accessible way to learn about this history. But I kind of like doing this one. My next video after this will be one on Yakov Sverdlov. I might also produce a video going over my goals for the channel for 2020 and overall the plan for content in the near future.